Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Project 3D. This is my newest 3D build. This is Johnny Storm, Human Torch from Fantastic Four. Uh, let me say, this was a nerve-wracking experience. I'd never painted anything that looked like it was on fire, and I think I just knocked it out of the park because the body looks like a burning hot ember, like a hot coal in a fire. It just has that molten look to it. The flames are bright and vibrant, and then in person, this thing just looks phenomenal and really does look like it's on fire. I was happy with the shadow work. It really grabbed all the muscles and made the muscles look ripped and shredded. This guy looks jacked and juice like he's on roids or something. <laughs> I mean, it just looks great. So if you want to see how I achieved this, stick around. This is the process it took. So I started off using just a true red. This was... Um, one of the Anita's acrylic craft paints and I used a lot of reducer and thinned it down and it really wasn't the color I was looking for but I think starting off using this as a base it's what ultimately gave me that burning ember hot cool look because the base of this has more of a pink like this base coat has more of a pink hue to it um, has that like salmon look and I think this underneath, later I go on a darker, put on a darker layer of red. But with this underneath, I think it gave me that, like, burning ember look. So this was kind of like a happy little accident. It turned out in my favor. Um, yeah, I just, I started off using a true red. And I just kept painting because I wasn't sure. I was like, maybe this will work. And later I decided, no, nah, I need to go a little darker. And I went back over it. I mixed uh, this true red with a red apple, which is a darker red. And it turned out really well. So I, go, I started off not painting the flames too. I just focused on the body because um, I want the flames to stay white. So when I add my flames, when I add the color to it, it pops more because it has a white base to it. Uh, the parts that I did over spray and get on the flames, I just go back over later in the video and I'll show you. I just add white over top of it with a paintbrush. I just focus on the body and I leave the boots and the gloves white. That way later they pop. So here you can see I added the apple red with the true red and it came out with th this is the look I was looking for. A darker, deeper red. And when I add my clear coat, it pops a lot, lot more. But I leave the the flames white and just focus on the body. Left the boots and the gloves white too. And the hair, because uh, the hair is actually gonna be on fire too. And once I finish the red, I go over it with a clear coat to seal it so I can touch it later and not worry about the paint coming off and I just let it dry. So after my clear coat dries, I go back over and anything I accidentally painted red that was flames, I go back over it with a white. Um, I think I used a snow white because it's a vibrant white and I need that as a base coat. And the whiter it is, the more your oranges and yellows on your flames are going to pop. So I used a very white, bright, vivid snow white. And I'm glad I did this. It was a crucial step to achieve the look I was going for. And I just meticulously painted all this white again. And when I finished, it actually looks really cool just at that point. I even go back through and do the eyes, eyebrows, nose, and a little spot in the ear canal but this is what it looks like complete and finish everything's white that is flames and i just touch up some of the hair you see there that the red goes over and just do some final touching up before i paint everything again So now that we're at the step for the flames, I mix up a color using this Apricot by Apple Barrel. It's an acrylic paint, and I use this orange fluorescent. Um, I mix it till it's like this glowing, 
fiery orange color and it's just more neon than anything. So the idea I had was not to paint everything orange and then go over it with certain spots in yellow because I didn't feel like the yellow would jump as much. So what I did was I started off painting certain spots orange and left other spots with the white base coat. That way when I paint my yellow onto that white base coat, the yellows would pop and be more vibrant. So I left certain spots white. And here with the jaggedy flames, anything that had tips to them, I went over a little darker with the orange to give it that fiery burnt orange look. And then I blend it down and leave a certain section that was white to paint the yellow and it'll all blend and transition really well, if that makes any kind of sense at all. And the best way I did this too was I start off going light on my paint and I gradually get darker because I don't want to accidentally go too bright or too dark with it and add too much paint because it's it's hard it's hard to go back from something. It's easier to keep going forward, but once you go too far, it's hard to go back. So I just start off real light at first and just gradually add to it and get darker and darker. And off camera is when I do my fine touch up work. And this is kind of where I left it with the, the orange. And you can see I left some spots open for the yellows, but this is what it looked like. And I think it looks really good. And I even went over the red a little bit with the orange and it gives it that real fiery red look that that's where the burnt fiery ember look comes from next i'll be adding the yellow flames and i didn't do anything special for this i just used this fluorescent yellow and anything that's white that's where i focus painting the yellow And in certain spots, I do go over the orange with yellow, and this helps it blend more. So you don't just have orange flames and yellow flames. It blends into a yellowy orange in certain spots, and that'll give it more of a full fiery flame look. It doesn't just contrast with the yellow and orange. It blends and actually looks like fire. And like I said, the same with the orange I do with the yellow. I start off doing light coats and gradually add to it. And off camera, I do the fine detail and really fine tune it and add what I want. And I just build onto the yellow until I get to the point that I'm happy with. So another crucial step to achieving a more realistic flame, I took some of my true red and on the tips of the orange on the flames, I add just some red highlights to it. You, you don't have to do this. You could just keep it the yellow and the orange flames, but adding some red in with the flames gives it more of a dynamic look. Uh, if you ever sit down and actually stare into a fire, it's not just two colors. I mean, there's there's blues in fire sometimes. There's greens in fire sometimes. But adding this red highlight, I think just ultimately gave it a more realistic fire appearance. And this was an idea from my girlfriend. I didn't even think about this. And she just gave me, you know, the idea. She said, hey, just here and there, just go back in with some red and you know, add some uh, little red highlights on the flames. And I give her all the props for that because she was right. It really did make this come together more. It was more dynamic and full and really brought the flames to life. I was very, very happy with her idea. Sometimes having someone's outside point of view looking in just really helps out. Next, I add some highlights and I started off using a black, but then decided to add some red into it because black was just too much. And my, my airbrush was giving me a lot of issues. I don't know if I didn't thin it enough, but I just had a lot of issues and I ended up mixing red with black and it just, it, it worked a lot better with 
the shadows. It made them look more realistic. It wasn't just black jumping off the red. Having some red in with the black just seemed like darker shades of red. And if you're new to painting and you're not really sure how to begin to do shadow work, you really just add your darker shades to anything that has like crevices or cracks in it or even like up underneath an arm or in between the thighs anywhere where like a lot of light wouldn't get to you go in and just darken it up and it gives everything a more 3d look anything that's just dark and crevicey you just kind of shade it in like on the back here you can see all the rip muscles like in between those muscles is where you add the dark colors to it and i spin it around like you can see the ribs that pop out there's you just go up underneath the ribs and just add a little darkening shadow look and up underneath the breast muscle right there you can see i darken that up and it just gives you a, a really good result abs are another good place to add it in between the cracks of the abs just anything that's a rip muscle in general you just want to focus adding shadows to and it's really cool because when you watch the process on video as you add your shadows to, in between your muscles you see the muscle fibers where they meet you add your shadows there and once you add shadows to it those muscles really just jump out and come alive they really look more dynamic and just shredded because if you didn't do you could just paint this the you know red and it would look fine but when you add this dark shadows to your 3d project it just brings it to a whole new level and you watch everything just piece itself together step by step on video so next i'll do some off camera touching up and i'll show you the results and that's honestly the final step to this and the results just blew me away so here you go man this thing looks amazing um like i said you could have stopped with red but look at this this looks so much better than just painting it red you add that muscle tone and it really came together the only final step i have after this is just adding another clear coat to this to seal it in but look at that detail man this thing just blew my mind all right guys with that all being said i'm gonna end the video here i hope you guys really enjoyed this project so after I add my clear coat, it's time to reunite Johnny with his sister Susan. This is Susan Storm, the Invisible Girl from Fantastic Four. These two look great together. And if you haven't watched my previous video, check it out. You'll see how I made her. These two just really contrast each other. The blue with the red just looks amazing. I also did the thing from Fantastic Four. And that's it. I hope you guys like this video. Subscribe on the way out. Johnny's off to save the day. Johnny, this is Tall Chat.